Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, I am showing you a new Marshadow promo card that's coming out in Japan. It's being given away in like a comic magazine thing. Why do we not get exclusive promos like that? This makes me sad. I know the World Championships happen this weekend, and I'm bringing you news of all of the decks, but you know what? You, you can't be ignoring these new promo cards. Now, Mars Shadow's got a very low HP, bye-bye level ball, but you can use Nest Ball to grab him out. Or, of course, you can use our old friend Bridget, probably after Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag. Being Psychic type is good because you're hitting for weakness on stuff like Garbodor, and we'll see in a minute. It is actually really good. It's one of the main selling points. Although the 70 HP is incredibly low. Retreat of 1 is fine. Could be worse. Although remember, if you're playing Psychic Energy, you do always have the option of using Altar of the Moon, which will reduce your retreat cost by 2 and hence give you free retreat. Weakness to Dark is fine unless people start playing Evelsal again. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. And Resistance to Fighting is always a good thing. Now, we talked about weakness here, and that's where the second attack comes in. Both of these attacks are kind of interesting. The second attack here for a double colorless energy, 40 damage, flip a coin, if Tails, this does nothing. Now, you can, of course, use the Victini from Guardians Rising to give you a 75% chance of hitting heads. Without the coin flip, I actually really like this. With the coin flip, I am wary, and the reason is exceptionally simple. Trubbish. Now, you can play a Professor Kakui and do 60 to anything and KO Rowlet. No, 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 no. We are not using Professor Kakui at the risk of flipping a Tails and wasting our attack for the turn. But against a Trubbish, this is just a one-hit KO. And if you're against a Garboda deck, you go second. You can evolve. So what do you do? You attach a double colorless energy to this, and then you get a cheeky KO on the first turn of the game. Two massive downsides to this strategy. Downside number one, it costs a double colorless energy. You've only got four of them in your deck, and although you can recover them with cards like Special Charge, like Puzzle of Time, it is risky, ladies and gentlemen. It is risky. Although if your opponent can't get another basic out, you will win immediately. But the fact that you've got to flip a coin, and if you flip tails, it does nothing. The fact that actually here... You're wasting a double colorless energy, and even if you get a KO, it's still a little bit dodgy, the amount of effort it's taking. I like it. I think it could be a huge amount of fun, but it does worry me, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like quite the investment. But the good news is, the other attack looks kind of fun as well. Now... This is a Psychic Energy, so you've got to use it in a deck playing Psychic Energy or Rainbow. You cannot use it in any deck like you could for the second attack. One Psychic Energy, choose one basic Pokemon from each player's discard pile and play it onto that player's bench. Now, the downside is you could end up giving a prize to do this. If your opponent ends up just taking a KO and remember you've got 70 HP, you've swapped this effect for a prize card, which is not to say you shouldn't do it, but it is to say you should think extremely carefully before you pull the trigger and actually do it. But this is good on both counts. And as a side note here, actually, you could always just try and strand a Pokemon in the active. I usually say, well, stranding Pokemon in the active is less of a viable strategy now because everyone's got Guzma, which works as a switch. And that's true. That is still a correct statement. But we basically saw the World Championships decided by a player having a Pokemon stranded in the active and not having a Switch. So it is still a viable strategy. Just a bit less so. You can get your own Pokemon back here and that's brilliant. Get a basic and then remember because it's on your bench at the end of your turn, it's ready to evolve at the beginning of your next turn. Get a Routes and then immediately Rare Candy evolve. Get an Eevee and immediately the next turn drop an Espeon. Get a Trubbish and immediately the next turn drop a Garbodor. Life, ladies and gentlemen, is good. But it's actually really nice for your opponent's side of the field as well. Getting a Pokemon is just 
fun. We saw this with the really old Honch Crow back in the day. I, I talked about this on one of my videos recently, although that was an ability, so you didn't usually give up a prize to do it. But there's so many things you can do. First, you just clog up their bench so that they cannot have an extra bench space. Secondly, you take a Pokemon out of the discard pile so they cannot use it with Rescue Stretcher, something like a Tapu Lele, grab it out their discard, put it on their bench. They then can't Rescue Stretcher for the Lele and use that Wonder Tag ability. But against decks like Night March, for instance, now I know it's expanded, but it's a good example. You get a Night Marcher onto their bench, and then they've actually got one fewer Night Marcher in their discard, which means they have a lower damage output. Not enough good stuff? How about just putting a Pokemon on their bench so that next turn you can play a Guzma and take some cheeky prizes? Now, Shaman has, well, it hasn't rotated, but it will on the 1st of September. So to all intents and purposes, Shaman has rotated. But getting a Shaman and then playing a Guzma to KO it for two prizes? He's got 110 HP. He gives up two prizes. That's the kind of thing Marshadow does. If this first attack was for a colourless energy, I would really be quite a fan of it. As it is, it's a niche attacker, and I cannot stress this enough, it gives up a prize. However, the fact that you can take cheeky KOs on your first turn, as long as you go second, the fact that this has so many disruptive possibilities, from stopping your opponent using a rescue stretcher, to filling up their bench, to... I mean, even in a deck like Zoroark, you could do extra damage with this. It really is quite a lot of fun. I don't think this is an amazing card, and the first attack using Psychic Energy really dulls the use. But I am going to give Marshadow free Wossies. Remember, a free Wossy card doesn't mean it's great. It means you need a copy or two in your binder because it makes a good tech in some decks. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much... Marshadow in a nutshell. But if you disagree with me, well, that's what the comment section is there for. Go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc., then head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. That's where you can find it. But by far the most important thing, as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.